Welcome to another unit in this SQL course. In a previous session, we talked about how we can extract the column on first and last names from our table of employees and then mark them with an E as being employees. Main idea, we wanted to have a set of names for all the people involved with our company so we could send them Christmas cards. However, the employees would get a slightly different card than the suppliers. So if I use this query, I more or less have everything prepared for my employees. Now I want to do the same thing for the suppliers. Well, I could just add a new query here and do more or less exactly the same as I did here, simply marking them with an S for supplier. However, the main idea of this unit would be how could I realize this in one single table so that I only have one table with all the names for the people involved with the company. Those people who are employees, they get an E in this um, column called type and those who are suppliers get an S in the column type. Well, it's easier, easier done than one might think. I simply copy the same query I did here down below I switch employees to suppliers. Instead of E, I'm going to use S. Change this here. Because, well, in the supplier table, it's also called first name, last name. If I would have a different description here, I would have to use different names in the second query. So this is more or less the same thing, but for the supplier table. That's why I also call them S for suppliers. And I erase the renaming of the column here. So I do more or less exactly the same as I did before. And I have two queries here. That would be the two ones I would put in the two separate queries if I would work with two. However, I wanted to have this in one table. So how could I link those two? I simply put a union in between. If I do this, I also see the symbol for this query changes, marking this as a special union type query where at least two columns, uh, two tables are linked, two queries are linked. Well, how does the output look like? I must have forgotten something. Yeah. The table is called supplier, not suppliers. Now it looks exactly the way it's supposed to be. I have the people here listed in the supplier table, this guy. And I have those who are listed in the employee tables listed as well, marked with E or with S. So this is almost everything I wanted to talk about here because this works decently well. However, there's two aspects we have to keep in mind. The first, you have to actually take care that the same number of columns, the same number of variables are extracted in each of those two queries. Because what SQL does, it matches them. So the first part you extract here, the first column you extract with the employees table will be listed in the same column as the first thing you extract from the suppliers. Second one will be fit with the second extraction, third one with the third one. So if I would mix those two up, if I would put the last names of the suppliers first and the first names in second place, This would still work, but I would get mixed up results. So for the employees, I would have first name, last name. For the suppliers, I would have last name, first names. The name of the column, however, would still be the same as with the employees. Well, the reason for the first problem is because they are actually fitted. First variable here, first variable here in the same column. The fact that 
they have the columns have the names of the first query are that the first query always defines column names. That's why I also had to erase the S type in the second one. This would have led to an error. I only define the name of the column up here. So if I want to use something totally different, I would have to put the S and then the new name up here with the first query. That's the second to last point I wanted to mention. Finally, well, my query in this context has all the names, but they're still not listed, listed decently well because they're not ordered, for example, by last name. How could I fix this? Well, we already learned that we can do this with the order by command. In this case, I have to put the order by at the end of my query and then I have to select a variable to order by. Well, I wanted to do this with the last name. Here it's important because the names from the first query, they not only define the column names, they're always the relevant, the most relevant ones before, because they're defining the structure. So if I want to order, I have to take the last names from the first query. So you have to use E last name. If I were to use the S last name, we can do this after this, you would get an error. However, let's start with the correct version first. Here we see it's ordered by last name. As I said, if I were to do this with the S last name, which might look the same, we will get an error. It tells us he can do this with this. So always remember, if you want to order this, work with the variables you extracted in the first of the two queries. Well, that was it. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I say goodbye and see you for the next session.